on this song. It says, I ask no other sunshine than the sunshine of his face. Amen on that. Well, first of all, I want to thank you all for the awesome lunch that we just had. It, it was amazing. Thank you so much for the ladies and for the sisters. You know, it's, it's another prop to have little children is that uh, I keep asking them, do you want another plate, do you want something else? I, I can get you one, and then even if they say no, I still get up and for the kids. That still is for me, you know? <laughs> it's for me because it was so delicious, so thank you so much for, for that. Relationships are not about control. They are about commitment. You know, when Jerry Sinfield began his comedy show, you may have heard of it, it was called uh, Sinfield, he paid one of his New York buddies what he considered to be a big compliment. He named a character on the show after him. The friend was Mike Costanza. The character on the show was George Costanza. What's more, you know, after the show became a big success, Jerry arranged for Mike to get a bit more of one episode. Apparently, Jerry valued, you know, valued uh, his friendship with Mike and wanted to express that in whatever way he could. So, at first, Mike Constanza bragged in the glory of having a character on a hit show named after him, but there were more than a few similarities between him and George. And he bragged to his friend that he was, you know, uh, the character on the show, George. However, the George character on the show wasn't based entirely on Mike Constanza. And to Mike's dismay, the writers of Sinfield had George do some things that Mike found embarrassing. For example, George danced happily when he found out his fiancé had passed away on the show. He knocked down a little old lady on a rush to get out of a burning building, and he took advantage of people on more than one occasion, and on and on goes the story. Well, you know, finally, Mike decided he had had enough about it. The George Constanza character was ruining his life, and the people he had impressed earlier with the Sinfield connection now saw Mike as the ultimate loser now. So Mike did the only thing he knew to do. You know what happened? Well, Mike sued his good friend Jerry Sinfield for $100 million for using the Constanza name. That's crazy, I know, but you know, the outcome of this event hasn't been settled the last time I checked. Maybe it has, I don't know, but the thing is, the fact is that Jerry, you know, could probably pay the lawsuit with a single visit to the ATM, but still, I couldn't help but feel sorry for Sinfield. And when I was doing this lesson, you know, it, it struck me, this, this story. When I heard this, not because he was a kid with a frivolous lawsuit, but because even him, even Jerry Sinfield, is not exempt from a failed relationship, you know? And most of the joy we experience in life, and most of the pain that we experience is the result of our relationships. Did you know that? You know, this applies to friendships, marriage, parent-child relationship, and work relationships. So, when you are surrounded by people you love and people that love you, the hardships of life become more verbal. In the other hand, no amount of success, and we talked about success this morning, but no amount of success can ever compensate for the pain of a failed relationship. However, you know, if we want to be happy, if you want to be happy, you'll have to learn to manage 
manage your relationships. Those who consider friendship and marriage a disposable item ultimately find themselves unhappy and alone. You know, when I was doing this uh, research for this lesson, uh, a recent study on Men's Health magazine reveals that the happiest and the healthiest people are those whose relationships are strong and fulfilling. So this afternoon, for a few seconds, well, for a few minutes, I, I want to talk to you about one of the main keys of having a good relationship with friends, marriage, workers, is practicing forgiveness. You know, Lewis Smith once said, it takes one person to forgive, it takes two people to be reunited. The great Martin Luther King Jr. said the following, we must develop and maintain the capacity to forgive. He who is devoid of the power to forgive is devoid of the power to love. There is some good in the worst of us and some evil in the best of us. When we consider this, we are less prone to hate our enemies. In this lesson, we would look at some attitudes and actions that we are involved in practicing forgiveness. My objective in this lesson is that each of us, each person should be able to understand the proper attitude to have toward someone who is in need and seeks forgiveness. That each sovereignly contemplate their need for forgiveness from God in relationship to another's need for forgiveness from them. What does the Bible say about forgiveness? Well, if we go to Hebrews 10, verses 16 through 18, the Bible says the following. This is the agreement I will make with my people in the future, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts. I will write my laws in their minds. I will forget their sins and never again remember the evil they have done. And after everything is forgiven, there is no more need for sacrifice to pay for sins. You know, in the old law, in the old testament, in the old covenant, there was a remembrance of sin. We know this. We know that in the old testament there was a remembrance of sin. And this was so because the blood of bulls and goats could never take away sin. Under these covenants, we know that sins are forgiven. But let me tell you, to live under this covenant of forgiveness, we as well must practice forgiveness. I know that sometimes it is harder to forgive someone than to ask for forgiveness. But let's just talk for a few moments about practicing forgiveness. First of all, in order to practice forgiveness, we must recognize that God's forgiveness of us is dependent upon a forgiveness of others. And I want to point out uh, the best example I could find in the Old Testament, Joseph's forgiveness of his brothers. And if you want to follow me here, or you can open your Bibles, in Genesis 50, verses 15 through 21, I will be reading from the easy-to-read version. And then I, I really like this version whenever it comes to stories. It's really good for me. And it says the following. After Jacob died, Joseph's brothers were worried. They were afraid that Joseph would still be mad at them for what they had done years before. They said, maybe Joseph still hates us for what we did. So the brothers sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he told us to give you a message. He said, tell Joseph that I beg him to please forgive his brothers for, for the bad things they did to him. So now, Joseph, we beg you, please forgive us for the bad things we did to you. We are the servants of God, the God of your father. That message made Joseph very sad, and he cried. His brothers went to him and bowed down in front of him. 
They said, We will be your servants. Then Joseph said to them, Don't be afraid. I am not God. I have no right to punish you. It is true that you plan to do something bad to me, but really God was planning good things. God's plan was to use me to save the lives of many people. And that is what happened. So don't be afraid. I will take care of you and your children. And so Joseph said kind things to his brothers, and this made them feel better. <coughs> what a great story about forgiveness. Now, if we remember, if we go back, what is the background of this story? Well, you know, their brothers tried to kill him. But one of them, the oldest, said, you know what? Let's not kill Joseph. Let's just sell them, you know, sell him to some people that were passing through Egypt. And we know the whole story about that. Now, if someone had the right to revenge, his cause was Joseph. You know, at that time, Joseph was only the second after the Pharaoh. He could have done anything that he wanted to do. But instead, it struck me what he said right here. He said, don't be afraid. I am not God. I have no right to punish you. What an amazing thing to say. Now, this reminds me of this scripture right here in Matthew 6, 14 through 15. When it says, if you forgive others for the wrongs they do to you, then your Father in heaven will also forgive your wrongs. But if you don't forgive others, then your Father in heaven will not forgive the wrongs you do. We see then, right here, that in order to practice forgiveness, we must recognize that God's forgiveness of us is dependent upon our forgiveness of others. Number two, also, in order to practice forgiveness, we must respect the value you know, of the one who needs forgiveness as God respects that value. And that brings us to Romans 6, uh, I'm sorry, Romans 5, verse 6 through 8. It says the following, it says, Christ died for us when we were unable to help ourselves. We were living against God. But at just the right time, Christ died for us. Now, very few people will die to save the life of someone else, even, even if it is for a good person. Someone might be willing to die for an especially good person, but Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And by this, God showed how much He loves us. Now, this is one of my favorite passages of all time. We as human beings, we, we, we tend to say, well, then change, and then we'll talk about it, we'll see if it's going to work out, if uh, friendships or, or relationships, you know, but you need to change first. But right here it says that Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And I understand. I mean, we might be thinking, I mean, what are you saying? Are you saying that we need to forgive, forgive everyone? Uh, what about if they take advantage of us? No, if they think, well, he or she's going to forgive me, so I, whatever I do, you know, it doesn't matter. Well, let me just clarify this. Forgiving someone doesn't mean that they will take care of advantage of you. You know, they can take advantage of you. And I will put this example, just give it out just one example. Let's say that you own a business. And a worker of you takes advantage on the register and he steals money. Well, of course, you will fire that person. And even though that you will forgive that person what they have done, I mean, I wouldn't hire him or her anymore. But forgiving is not having it in your heart, that bitterness. Not talking to every person you encounter about it. Because that, at the end of the day, is going to damage you more. So, 
That is forgiveness. Not having it in your heart. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. And by this God showed us how much he loved us. You know, William Arthur Ward once said, Flatter me, and I may not believe you. Criticize me, and I may not like you. Encourage me, and I will not forget you. Love me, and I may be forced to love you. And that is exactly what Christ did. Christ died for us while we were still sinners. So we need to respect the value of the one who needs forgiveness as God respects that value. Number three, in order to practice forgiveness, we must act toward the one forgiven as we want one God to act toward us. What I mean by this is exactly what Paul said right here. You know, Ephesians 4.32 and Colossians 3, 12 and 13, I will read it together and you see what he is trying to say right here. It says, Brothers in Hilton, Oklahoma, be kind and loving to each other. Forgive each other the same as God forgave you through Christ. You know, God has chosen you and made you His holy people. He loves you. So your new life should be like this. Show mercy to others. Be kind, humble, gentle, and patient. Don't be angry with each other, but forgive each other. If you feel someone has wronged you, Forgive them. Forgive others because the Lord forgave you. What a powerful scripture, scripture right here. It's so much easier to read than to be done. I understand that. But we must practice forgiveness. Be kind, humble, gentle, and patient to each other. Finally, brothers. In order to practice forgiveness, we must make every single effort to forgive as God forgives by forgetting the trespass. You know, Psalms 103, 10 through 12 is one of my favorite verses in the scripture of all time. It says the following. It says, we sin against him. But he didn't give us the punishment we deserve. His love for his followers is as high above us as heaven is above the earth. And he has taken our sins as far away from us as the east is from the west. There's even a song about this. I love this song. That he has taken our sins as far away from us as the east is from the west. But that is exactly what God has done with our sins. You know, whenever you feel that you have sin in, in your life and you ask for forgiveness to God and you pray about it, and then a couple of hours later or a day later or a week, you may still feel bad and you go back and ask for forgiveness for the same sin, you know what God says? What are you talking about? What are you talking about? I don't remember what are you asking for. I already forget that. And that is exactly what we must, that what we must practice as well. We must practice forgiveness. You know, somebody said the following. Somebody said that not forgiving someone is like drinking poison and expecting the other person to that. The only one that is going to be damaging our, will be ourselves. You know, especially with social media. I mean, if somebody has wronged you, and, and you see that person having fun and having the time of his or her life, and you're going like, how in the world is that person enjoying life after they have done to me, you know? And, and but like I said in the morning, until we understand that the commandments of God is for our own benefit, we will never do them. We need to forgive, forget about it. Don't talk to every person you encounter about the problem. Just leave it to God. Because that will do good to you. In conclusion, are we practicing forgiveness in our lives? We need to recognize that God's forgiveness of us depends upon forgiveness of others. 
We need to respect the value of those who need forgiveness as God respects that value. And we need to act toward the one forgiven as God will act toward us. Forgive as God forgives. Forget. This is the short lesson this afternoon. And of course, I don't want to sit down before I give out the invitation. But if you're a Christian but you have fallen away, well, you have a great opportunity this afternoon. You know, we are a family. What a great thing. We can pray for each other. We can uh, support, encourage each other. And if, and if you feel that you are struggling with this in your life, we can pray for you. You know, this is not anything to be ashamed of. I mean, if we are a family, we can pray for each other. Now, if you're the one that that needs forgiveness for anything that you have to do anything wrong, then you need to say, I'm sorry. You need to say those words, I'm sorry, and try to be the best that you can do. So anything, please stop, stand up, and let's sing the invitation song.